Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. The concluding verse says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All of the saints of the Lord said, Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah again. We are here to begin this celebration, and I pray that you will begin to pray and intercede for this family and each person as we share this moment. Hallelujah. Psalms 27 and 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, and he shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Friend, we're here definitely to be a blessing to this atmosphere and not a burden to this atmosphere. So I solicit that you would pray for this family and that you would embrace them by embracing your worth with God and begin to praise and whisper a prayer right wherever you are that the Lord will give them all of the strength, all of the courage that they need for this moment. To God be the glory. i 
Talking about when I, when I, yeah, won't it, won't it be wonderful? When I, when I, I'm gonna sit down by the band, look up and some humble things. Can I get a witness here that know it will? I know it will be wonderful when I get over there. When I get over there, I want to see my friend and I want to see my loved one. And then I want to move, move up a little higher. I want to meet Paul, and I so would, I so would like to meet Silas, yeah, and I'm going to move up a little bit high, yeah, Lord, I want to meet old Daniel, and I want him to tell me about the lion then, then I want to move up a little high. Hebrew children, I want them to tell me about the fiery furnace. Yeah, most of all, most of all, y'all, most of all, can I tell y'all what? I want to meet Jesus. Anybody want to meet Jesus? I want to meet the one that died for me. Yeah. I just want to see the nail print in his hand. I want to see where they pierced him. Pierced him in his side. And then I want to tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. If it had for you, it would be no me. If it had not been for you, wouldn't be no Lee. Oh, I want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about when, when I want it Wonderful. Get over You know the aim will be saying I know the job will be raining. Won't it be? Won't it be? Say it again. Won't it be wonderful? I know it will. Won't it be, won't it be, oh, 
my last song. I want to hear him come home. When I sing my last song, I want to hear him say, Welcome home. When I sing my last song, I want to hear him say, Welcome home. I want to hear him say, you got all over this place.
Well, I honor the family with everybody stand to give God the best praise you got and comfort them. Come on. I need the saints that know that God is a healer. I need the saints that know that God is a protector. And that God will heal their broken hearts. Come on, I need you to release a praise for real. Open up your mouth and give God a hallelujah. Give God a thank you, Jesus. And let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Before you sit down, look at somebody and tell them, say, neighbor, this is no longer a funeral. It's a home going. And if you know like I know, when I get there, I ain't got to worry about no more troubles and no more pain. I need somebody from the front to the back to open their mouth and give God glory for the life and legacy. I feel brother. He's in that place where the river shall be the rest of the head and Christ shall rise. your shout shoes on. I don't know if you got your house shoes on. I don't know if you came because you want to look good and get some pictures. But I need some folk that do like, like that man in the Bible when he danced out his clothes and said, I bless the Lord at all times. I need you to shout with the voice of triumph one more time and give God a hallelujah. Shout! Hallelujah! God bless you to this wonderful family. He's in here. Let's look at somebody that said, Jesus is in here. Now, family, if you could look around, everybody that's in this place is here to support you all and let you know we love you. So I'm going to go ahead and say it for everybody else. Excuse us if we shout because we got something to shout about. Somebody shout glory to God. We're going to follow the program. Our first selection is coming from Mr. George Dean. And after that, the scripture reading will be by Bishop Clarence Parks for the Old Testament and Bishop Willie Wilson for our New Testament. And Pastor Billy Rainey will come with our prayer, and I'll be back in that order.
Hallelujah. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. I am up here to read the Old Testament scripture, but I want to say that to the Williams family that you have my prayers. Amen. I've been knowing, they've been knowing me, Lee and, Lee and Willie and others have been knowing me all of my life. And uh, we just thank God my wife is related to Lee's wife. Just thank God for God blessing him to actually go all over the world and let people know that Mississippi had someone that was a king in it. And he was the king of gospel. From Psalm 73, starting at the 21st verse, it says, Thus my heart was grieved. And I was pricked in my inside. Nevertheless, I am continued with thee. Thou hast holden in me by thy right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. And after 
word receive me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart fail it, but God is my strength and my heart and my portion forever. But it is good for me to draw now to you now, God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all of his works. The word of God is blessed. Bless the Williams family. greatest lessons that I ever learned in my ministry of pastoring I was taught by Brother Lee Williams and I thank God for him not sometime but all of the time and for the entire family our condolences go to you because we love you and we appreciate you amen I think last night it was said that they thank you sister Annie for sharing Lee, and I thank you for sharing it with me. Amen. Our scripture, New Testament scripture, is coming from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with verse 13. And it says, But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also we also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain Man, in the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort ye one another with these words. Amen. God's word for God's people. Let the church say amen. Certainly we thank God for the William family. Thank God for this opportunity. Amen. Just want to say to the William family, appreciate uh, this invitation. Lee, Lee William, he has paid his debt. Let me say that when I started pastoring New Eleven and Missionary Baptist Church in 1998, Lee music ministry, quartet ministry, it really took off. But let me say, 
to you out there that Sister Annie Ruth husband shared with the world. She not only shared with the family, but she shared her husband with the world. And his ministry was up and down the dangerous highway. God have been good to the William family. We are here to celebrate an icon, a legacy, the life of Brother Lee Wee. And I hope you have been praying for this family all along since the news of his passing. He's not dead, but he's just asleep. Let us lift this family up today. Amen. If you don't have your business in your house in order, all what Lee sung about all those years up and down the dangerous highway all over this world was about Jesus. He is the way and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. Let us pray. God, our Father, we just thank you right now for this day. This is another day that you have made, and we are rejoicing. Not because Brother Lee is gone, but we're rejoicing because all who he sung about, the life that he lived was about Jesus Christ. And God, we thank you for the wife, the children, the grandchildren. God, we ask you to continue to cover them. God, we know that we wish we could do more for the William family, but God, we know that this is further that we can go. But God, we know that you can go all the way. You spoke to Lazarus and he came forth. God, we just want you to comfort the William family, the Thornton family. God, all of these families that are connected, cover them under the blood of Jesus the Christ. God, we know because of him, we can face tomorrow. God, we just ask you to cover this William family now, God. There will be days will come. There will be weeks and months. The memories that he shared with us on this side. We thank you for his life. God, we pray for the covering of the entire family and the friends who are gathered here from near and far. We ask you to bless this service this day. It's not about him, but it's all about the one who died for his sins and ours. And we give you glory. We give you honor today. We celebrate the life and the legacy of the quartet icon, Lee William. God, we ask you to bless us now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Shout amen. If I can hear Brother Lee voice one more time. In my heart, I believe he can stand here and tell y'all, let's have a good time. Now, I want everybody from the front to the back to know that even though we're in a service where most people would say it's a sad occasion, but it's a celebration because he has his crown. And I want everybody to know that if you praise God in this place, we can encourage this family and help them. And just to look at mama, look at the brothers and look at the family. I want to let y'all know that the peace of God is here. And you got some praises around you, all around this building. Somebody shout glory to God. Next we'll have a musical selection by Brother Zacardi Cortez. And I'll be back right after that. Give him a hand as he comes. is good and he's worthy to be praised um i'm not gonna be before you long but uh, i just want to uh first give it unto god and to all the pastors um i need y'all to do me a quick favor uh i need y'all to make some noise for the myth the man the legend dr lee williams can y'all scream as loud as you can for this icon this giant 
I want to uh, thank the family, the Williams family, for um, not only um, giving him to us, giving him to the world, but just thank y'all for letting us have your dad, your grandfather, your husband, um, because uh, we needed a Lee Williams, amen? And we still need Lee Williams, amen? And uh, it's just very, very sad. I want to thank um, um, Pastor Sparrow for inviting me. Thank the Williams family for inviting me. And I just come to do my part, y'all, and I'm going to get out the way. I love God, and there's a little song, amen, that I sing. Um, it says, let your power fall when your name is called. Fight this battle for me, Lord, and help my unbelief so I can tell all my friends, hallelujah, that you have won again. Come on, if you know we're serving undefeated God in here, can I get somebody that came to give God a praise? to lift your voice and say, let your power fall when your name is called prove the doubt of wrong yeah, yeah because you're still mighty God, you're still mighty God, you're still mighty still mighty and strong so fight this battle for me. Lord, I need you to do it right now. Fight this battle for me. And help my unbelief so I can tell all my friends. Somebody give God a praise right now. Somebody give God a praise. God, we give you the praise. But kid, even when it looked like we lost, he won again. Even when it looked like it's over, God won again. Anybody know we serve a champion? Come on, somebody help me sing there. Ain't that say, you have won again.
your lips. Tell somebody we won again. Now, I just need to check the room just right quick. I need to see do we have at least 100 saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost folk to jump up on your feet and shout, I'm filled with Jesus. somebody said, neighbor, if you can give me 15 seconds, I just can't hold my peace right now because I know what God is to me. If he means anything to you, I want you to shout holy.
they got a little dance in their knee. And I want you to find them and point at them and say, neighbor, I dare you to praise God for five more seconds. If he'll turn around for you in five seconds, that's all you got, and I'm going to cut you off. Shout, shout, shout. somebody this is a celebration tell them again say this is a celebration and when you celebrate the king of kings you show respect for who God gave us so one more time from the front to the back give God glory Obituary sadly. Let's continue to think on God. Glory to your name. Hello there, Williams family. It's Ja'Kaylin Carr. I want to let you know that, first of all, we're praying for you during this time. We know that it's not easy for you, but I just want to thank you first and foremost for your strength. And I'm so grateful for the legacy that Mr. Lee Williams has left behind and just teaching us how to be kind. He have made such a huge impact on the gospel music industry and not just the gospel music industry, but made a huge impact on people's lives all across the world. We're praying for you again during this time. You're not in this alone. We're pushing you in the spirit. Thank you all so much for allowing me to be a part of this wonderful celebration. Listen, his legacy will live on. I want to pause first and uh, give my sincere condolences to the family of the great Mr. Lee Williams. Uh, I want to pause and just share with everybody that I met him years ago, and uh, I was awed. I was uh, just struck by his brilliance, 
his ability to witness, to minister, and everybody gives him credit for standing flat-footed and just tearing us apart. You know, I need to tell y'all something. It was so much bigger than that. Mr. Lee Williams was able to minister to you, and you believed what he was saying. Uh, he will be missed. He was not just an icon in, in the gospel or quartet industry. There are folk that love this man all over the world. So I send my condolences, and I say to all of you, let's hold up the standard. He had a standard. Let's hold up a standard and be uh, uh, examples of who and what he was and will be for the rest of our lives. I love all of y'all. Praying for you. God bless. It's Pastor John. I just want to say the world is lost in one of the great, one of the greatest to ever touch the microphone, one of the greatest to ever touch the stage. Hopefully you will, you will definitely be missed. You miss the media, you don't miss your energy, you don't miss everything that you do. And the public you all have learned to live now and depend on Jesus. Oh, we learn. All of us have learned to trust in the Lord. Rest well, brother William. God bless Amen. The people of God said amen. We're blessed to be on the grounds and thank God that the grounds are not on us. Somebody says it's good to know him. I said it's better to have him. I would rather have him and not need him than to need him and not have him. Amen. We thank God today for this great celebration to our agenda guide, Adams, to eulogist Pet Pettis. And we thank God for all of my colleagues and co-laborers of the gospel to all the clergies that's here and to uh, the Williams family. We thank God for you today. <clears throat> And to all the well wishes that came to be part of this experience. Uh, Dr. Lee Williams is a legend. Uh, I cannot overlook the fact when I look and see the other legends, uh, Deacon Harvey Watkins, a man who I love dearly. To each of you, I want to say this. I've been asked to give words of comfort. What do you say in a time like this? Well, I often say I've passed for 33 years, and I share with our members all the time that Ecclesiastes 3 says there's a time and season for all things. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. If you got a birth certificate, there is a death certificate. When did Dr. Lee Williams start dying? He started dying when he started living. I tell you what makes it so tough Sister Williams is, we always take loanership for ownership. The other week I took my wife, Miss Strong's 
car to get service, they gave me a loan of. They said, look at it and tell us if you see some defaults. I seen the paint peeling, but I didn't get the car painted. It was a loaner. The tires was growing thin, but I didn't go buy new tires. It was a loaner. What I'm saying is we had Lee so long until we thought he was ours. He was just a loner. But we considered that we owned him. You ever loan folk money they had it so long till they thought it was theirs? But the rightful owner got a right to come get what's his. Williams called them husband. The children called him daddy. Amen. Brothers called him brother. Friends called him friend. Everybody got so close in their relationship and it's, it's got us hurt today. But he was just alone. In St. Luke 19, we're brief. Jesus tells a story to a man getting ready to go into Jerusalem. He said, there's a coat. Go to a village against yourself. There's a coat you'll find tied up. Loose that coat. Untie him. Ain't nobody never rode him. He said, but if any man asks you why you loose him, Tell him that I have need of him. <laughs> Couple of things we need to know in that is that first of all, the Lord had need of him. Notice the coat was at a man's house. Jesus said, loose the coat. And if anybody asks you why you loosed him, Tell him I have need of it, which means that even though the man at the house was keeping the coat, the coat belongs to me. He was just a loner. I tell you this and I'm out of here. Headed to Florida one day, do a revival. Miami, Florida. Uh, heard a story. Lady said that this woman was headed to Florida also. We so she stopped at the store before getting to a gate and bought her some cookies. She gets to the gate, the gate, sat down, and noticed something strange. The man that she sat by was eating out of her cookie sack. So instead of asking him to quit. He got a cookie, she got two. He got one cookie, she got another two. She kept battling him with her cookies. He can't eat all my cookies. And finally he got to the last cookie. He split that cookie, gave her half of it. And she was so mad, she was angry. With agony, she got got up, went to the lady's room, and threw her pocketbook to the wall, and all her utensils fell on the floor, even her cookies. She discovered he really wasn't eating out of her cookie sack. She was eating out of his. And I know today, it looked like God ate out of your cookie sack. But you know what? All the time, you've been eating out of his. Not only have we been eating out of his cookie sack, I want to close by telling you 
Wasn't it just nice of Jesus to split the cookie? Somebody ought to tell him, thank you for splitting the cookie. Hey! I'm just glad he split the cookie. It was his all the time. God bless you. Be encouraged with these words. He split the cookie. Split the cookie. I started thinking about Oreos and started getting close. You know, I was trying to, you know. <laughs> I tell somebody, I say, he split the cookie. Thank God he did that. Somebody shout glory to God. But right here, we're going to have some expressions. Um, we're going to go with our siblings first, our uncles, and then the spiritual QCs, and I'll come back in that order. Give them a hand as they come. In spite of a situation, God is good. All right, I'm going to say a few short words. I won't be here in but a minute. But I want to say a few little things about my brother. One morning, we was waiting on the bus to go to school. Back then, it was hard to get something to eat. Lee took his oatmeal, swung a little on me, and, and it started an oatmeal fight. Because he was so smart, he was slinging a little oatmeal on me. I'm slinging a hunk on him. And every time I sling a hunk on him, he'll get it eaten. <laughs> Me and a big dummy didn't have sense enough to know he was eating. And I was a grown man before I found out what he was doing. <laughs> and one more little shot with it, I'm gonna get out of the way. We was playing, I don't know with what, just playing. And Lee looked up at my mama and he said, Ma! That's a great big old bump on your face. You want me to bust it? She said, yes, son, bust it. But she didn't have no idea how he was going to bust it. Pow! <laughs> Knock my mama out of the chair. <laughs> Can I do a little of one more? <laughs> We was waiting at this time, building a drive. And Lee was throwing a screw across there where Pastor McGee was. And he didn't fire Pastor McGee up. He said, all right, whoever hit me, I'm going to kill him. So he was throwing that screw. Finally, he threw one that hit him inside the head. Blood was running down in Lewis' high. He ran up there right quick. He had Lewis by the hand. Who, who did it, Lewis? Who did it? <laughs> who did it? Show me who did it. We're going to get it. <laughs> Guess who did it? He did it. <laughs> okay. My mama was fishing. Y'all know where Westwood Park is? The lake's still there right today. We was little, and my mama was catching fish. 
and we all was catching some fish. She ran out of bait. And there was an old bull way down in the pasture. He was moo. Moo. So she sent him to the house to get us some bait. He didn't want to go no how. He went to the house. The bull was bedding, but the bull wasn't in the house where we were. He knew it, but he didn't want to dig the bait. He said, Ma! He, she, he didn't left the lake while we was. And he was called back, Ma! Ma! That bull in the house with you? I think my mother was running so fast, so I have a blow to the back when she got there. <laughs> Come to find out the bull wasn't close to him, but you could hear the bull, and I didn't know my mama could run so fast. But Cornelia could run if she had to. Is that it? He got a bunch more. I ain't going to tell nothing else on If I, have to go, if I go tell him some more, it might lead around to me. Hello, everyone. I didn't know that part of Lee, um, but I did hear many stories about him. I am one of his sisters. And um, one thing I did learn from Lee is that he was a very patient and um, very wise person. He was always slow to speak and swift to hear, just like the Bible told us. And that's, that's one thing he actually taught me. You know, and uh, my sister was saying, you need to get something together because, you know, we may have to get up and speak. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not used to getting up and speaking in front of everyone. But I wanted to write some things down because I'm kind of like my mama. Sometimes when we stand up, our thoughts sit down. But what I've got to say is so important, I didn't really want to forget it. So, um... Lee was one of my brothers who literally taught me how to be slow to speak and swift to hear. He was that perfect example. Many times when I went to him with the problem, he listened to the full story, even if that story took me an hour, hour and a half, two hours, could have taken me at least all day, but he never said a word. He would always be that person that would let you get finished with the whole story. That's just who he was. And after I finished, he would always pause. And if you all knew him, the next word would come out, well. And then he would give you a solution to the story or give you something to do to encourage you. He, he never discouraged you. He was always there for his family. Even if what I came to him may not have been really interesting, you know, he all, he never, you never knew that he was not interested, he was just there, he was a listener. And that was very important to me. He also taught me how to be humble and patient. You see, he sang because he loved to sing. Some people may sing for different reasons, but one reason why he did sing is because he actually loved to sing. You know, and just have, as we have learned over the years, you know, we learned that he was the, I believe the salutatorian of his class. and. And I believe that God began to work with him then because he began to give him words and things to say and things on his heart. So a lot of times, a, a bunch of the songs that he did uh, actually write, they really came from within. I believe I heard someone say that. They came from the heart. You know, and that's why he could write about, uh, come on, let's have a good time or, you know, just different songs that he did sing because they literally came from the heart. And he really taught us how to be patient and kind and that was one thing you know when you humble yourself before the mighty hands of God God will lift you up and I believe that that's how he got where he was because he was so humble he was so patient God at the due time he lifted him up and he became who he was even when he got what some people begin to say you know he was known all over the world he never changed when my sisters came to the house, when my brothers came to the house, different people would come, my children, your children, he was always Uncle Lee to everybody, 
He would always try to buy things from the store for everybody. He always tried to get everybody something to eat. He was just Lee. Whether he was known to the world or whether he was just himself not known to anyone, he was always the same. That was a big encourage to me, and I'm glad that God loaned him to me. I'm glad. I'm glad to have been a part of his family. I don't have a lot of stories to tell like Willie had, but I do want to say this to the William family. Destiny is a part of our lives. And if we define our destiny, we, devi we define where God wants to place us. From the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1 and 4, said, from your mother's womb, I knew you. He found destiny and purpose for his life. That's why all of us, can say that this man was a legend in his time. And that's why we listen to the voices of what he said. He found his purpose. If you can find your purpose, you can fulfill what God has called you to do here in the earth. God bless you. That's it. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Tell him thank you one more time. Thank you. Glory. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. I want to say a couple of things about my nephew, Lee Williams. We practically were raised in the same house. He had four brothers that formed a little group under the senior group called the Gospel Stars. Junior gospel stars consisted of Willie, Lee, Robert, and Frank. And one of Lee's favorite songs back at that time was Eager Stirred Her Nest. Do you, anybody in the building remember that song? I think it was the Southern Wonders that sung it. But anyway, Lee Williams have always been an humble individual. Humble. When I say humble, I mean humble. We talk many times. Many of you all don't know that Lee started leading songs, and one of his favorite songs at that time was Jesus is alive and well. Anybody in the building remember that song? Jesus is alive and well. He wasn't the main lead singer of the spiritual QCs in which I was a member of the original group, the spiritual QCs. Later on, in 1964, I think it was, I moved to St. Louis. Lee kept the name of the original QC's going. Many times, Lee and the QC's would come to St. Louis. Didn't nobody hardly come out to the program to see them. I think one time I had them, I think we came within like $38 
and making our expenses for I could give Lee them something to go back home with. So Lee saw the time when he was down here. But when God put his little stamp on something, when God put his stamp on something, otherwise, if man puts you up, man can pull you down. But if God elevate you, can nobody pull you down except you do it yourself. But if you walk upright before God, no good thing he will, will, will withhold from you. One of Lee's favorite songs was, we talked many times on the phone that when he had having problems, he'd call me, we talk, we talk, and once I try to give him a word of encouragement, a solution to his problem, and one thing I noticed about him that when he have heard what I said to him, when I get through talking, he said, thank you, sir. I know he have heard what I had to say to him, but he will listen. One of his favorite songs, we talked about his songs, Jesus is Alive and Well, Come On, Let's Have a Good Time, Personally, Love Will Go All the Way, You Can Run But You Can't Hide, but one of his favorite songs he told me was, I, I can't, I can't give up now. God bless you all and thank you for supporting my nephew. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you. I guess I know more about Lee than any brother he had or any of my brothers other than his mother. I open up to him. He knows some things about me. Only Lee knows. I know some things about Lee. Only he knows. Only I know. But I give it in and all on down. What the sound and the Richard Priest stand up, wherever you at, they stand up. Why, why Doc here? Okay, well, he, uh, now them, them two was, uh, you want to get the root of it, them two were the old gospel style, which where it come out from. You got to have a root somewhere. Yeah. And that, that was where it come out from. And they, they, they were the, the root that he started in on them. And I, he used to come to me a lot of time. He said, he said they get me to sing that funeral. He said, what should I do? He said, I don't want to pull out the, the issue of life on them and they're in trouble already. I said, I can't help you with that. <laughs> I said, you to talk to Jesus about that one. I mean, we were on our own. He was, he was just good in everything that he went into. And that's what I liked about him. If he didn't believe in it, he didn't, be, he didn't fool with it. And I, I loved that about him. He had a lot of my qualities, and I loved that. <laughs> yes, I, yeah, I love him. My, my, my two brothers there, when they would get to sing, when they first started to sing, y'all know y'all, y'all tell me, he should be talking about Lee, but that's the root. And, and they, would, they would get up, when they started to sing, a lot of them would, uh, people would get up, 
start going out. And sooner or later, they would, they would hold him until the last to keep the people from leaving. Now, I ain't bragging on them, but the boys could sing. <laughs> you, you, what, you, what, what I mean about that, if you, uh, you got up behind Mitchell, you didn't fuck him. Because he done sung in the spirit. And the only way you can communicate with God is in spirit and in truth. We, see, we are in a, God is in a different dimension than we are. And you can't get there only through the spirit. And I, I love what's going on here. We just run around. And people, he, now, we talked about the issues of life. Just like he was, last time I talked with him, that he was really at himself, you know, he said. We were talking about the, how they, the men had them one in the hole. I said, yeah, we are. He said, oh, you ain't doing all that about so well. Regardless of what I'm doing it or not, I know what's going on. I ain't doing nothing, doing nothing about it. He said, well, people going to get mad with you when you tell the truth. I said, I don't care. I don't care about them getting mad with you. got mad with you. <laughs> I was mad enough to kill him. <laughs> but I'm glad he died. Thank y'all. Amen. God bless you. Would everybody clap your hands for the spiritual QCs? And we'll go in this order. It'll be the spiritual QCs. Mr. James Ballard and Glenn Stevenson of MCG Records. And Brother Linwood, and after that, Deacon Harvin Watkins Jr. come, and I come back after that. I will give God all honor and praise to all the four spirits of heaven. And to all of you, I guess I'm a part of the latter years QCs. In behalf of the spiritual QCs, I can say one thing about this man. He took me all over the world with him. And uh, I thank Miss Ann for sharing him with us and all his family. I'm going to miss him. And I know the guy's going to miss him, you know, but I don't know how to say it. He was just, he was one of a kind. Used to, I was telling Mr. Dean last night, I said, he had me in the dressing room. He would call me over to the side. He said, man, what you think about it? I said, it's all right. I said, it's good, man. It's got its good and bad. When he get back to him, he said, I love it. He said, I wouldn't take nothing for it. What I'm saying, i never seen nobody love what he do so much. And when he sang, you know, a lot of times I would say, Ain't many folks here. Why are you singing so hard? And so long. <laughs> <laughs> but that was him. It was all or nothing. So I thank God for having the opportunity to go with this man. And I pray that the rest of the fellas loved it like I did and, and give him honor because he wasn't just in management over us. He guided me. He took me in back in, I came in like 78, me and Al. That's 40 some years. And uh, man, I tell folk, I said, man, I ain't know nothing about nothing. I said, we used to pay the same. And to be honest with you, when they do, when we did get blessed, to make a little money, we really didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, we knew how to spend it. But it was it was like, man, I don't know, you know, I don't know, punch a clock and trying to work, you know. But it was a blessing and all. And to all the fans all over, I thank God for you all. I've had so many phone calls from all over the world you know, saying that they couldn't make it. We understand, but it's just a thought. They count. And I want to say to the family, we do bless y'all and pray that he give you strength to move on. And he will. He will. And I thank God for all of you all. Thank you. 
Come on, let's get a QC's a hand. Come on, you ought to be standing all over this building around this, around this auditorium. Come on. Now, I failed to say one thing. Let's try to keep it at two minutes. Amen. Uh, and at this time, we have Brother James Bullard and Brother Glenn Stevenson from MCG Records. Brother Linwood coming after that. And Deacon Harvey Watkins Jr. will come out there. So, y'all, two minutes to talk and 15 seconds to get happy. Amen. Good afternoon, saints. There's a lot to be thankful for for Brother Lee Williams. There's a lot. First of all, I want to say to you, Miss Annie, your spirit, when we first started this, I watched you on a lot of the videos and just your spirit and happiness for your husband. I'll never forget that. And your children, Sack and Cece there, your dad and all of you was a special man. Lee, I've never met a person like Brother Williams. Amen. He never let success change him. Amen. He was a servant <laughs> unto God for the world. There's a lot of great things that happened through this group. But Brother Lee Williams stayed humble to the cause. God has been dealing with me, and I have, to, I, have to, I have to go through this journey. I know you said two minutes. I have to go through this journey real quick because God did it, but there was pieces to this journey. The original Bishop Thornton in the early days, we thank you. Elder Mitchell Thornton, we thank you because without you all, a lot of this would not have happened. Then we met, even before we met you all, Brother Al Hollis, Leonard Shumpert, the late Roger McKinney. That was the start of this journey. Then there were other pieces, other QCs. We thank you. I never take anything for granted. As I, as I grew with Brother Lee Williams, this was not an accident. This was a move of God. The Sunday night that I saw him for the ver saw them for the very first time, we were in Phoenix City, Alabama, 150 miles from where I live. I went there to see who this really was. And yes, at that time, it was 1996, I think, I went downstairs, we met, exchanged cards, and God did it. And one thing I know the world will agree with me, what seemed like not a whole lot. God decided he would take this group to be the example of what didn't look like a whole lot and bless them from the bottom to the top. Amen. That is something that I will never forget. Amen. The ministry that this group, and there's many great groups, their ministry touched thousands, if not millions of people for real. We have got those calls from people that said, I've been, a, a lady, I want to say this real quick. One Sunday we were in Greenville, South Carolina at the start of this. Spirit Fest and that big event in September they just had last week. Lee went to the radio station this particular Sunday morning. And we, we were leaving the radio station and the lady was outside saying, can I speak to you, Brother Lee Williams, for one moment? She was on her way to church. Lee being nice, he walked up to her and listened to her. She says, uh, your ministry touched me and my husband. And I just had to stop by here to tell you thank you for what you've done. She said, I know you got this concert. She said, if you don't mind, will you just stop by the church just for a minute? Brother Lee Williams, being the man that he is, he looked at me, he, he pointed at me. He didn't say nothing. He, he just pointed at me. I said, let's do it. We went to that church that Sunday morning and met the pastor, 
brought us up to the front. Brother Lee Williams was a blessing to that church. He didn't fuss. I said one time, Lee, you ready to go? He said, no, I'm okay. Just him being the servant and being obedient to the cause. One other thing real quick. I remember one night, one, one weekend, we were in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. The beginnings of this journey. George Dean and the Gospel Four and Lee Williams. And a lot of you know how close those two groups were. That particular Sunday morning, the Gospel Four's band broke down. And Lee being Lee, did not want to leave them in North Carolina. So it got late. I said, Lee, we need to get on to Atlanta. They're going to think we're not going to come. So Lee, myself, George Dean, and I think it was Patrick, got in my car, went to Atlanta. The thing that sticks out with that, Lee made the QCs wait for the gospel for to get straight. He didn't want to leave his friends. That was Lee Williams at his best. And I, I'll never forget that. <laughs> then we got to Atlanta. And this is kind of funny to me. Lee says, uh, we're not that late. They haven't even left the people in the building. What Lee didn't know, those people that were standing down that sidewalk were people that wanted to get into the church. That was the early signs of, oh, boy, we got something. And just that look on Lee Williams' face like, man, I can't believe this. But I'll never forget Brother Lee, Lee Williams' songs, the QCs. There's the message in all of those songs. Me and Brother Harvey Watkins talked that Monday, I think it was the 6th, and I said, man, the gift that God gave Lee Williams to write songs, it's not an accident. It's not an accident. To the family again, we love you. We thank you for this journey. To the fans all over the world, it did not happen without you. It did not happen. One other thing, Brother CC, I told you this last night. I don't know what God is going to do, but I know he's getting ready to do something through you. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you. To Mrs. Williams and the rest of the family, relatives and friends from every city and state that you represent, I told Glenn I was going to say all that. I want to talk about Lee Williams, the God sent messenger. Lee Williams have healed more people than you can imagine. We have received letters after letters after letters about the healing that's happened to people on the sick bed. Not only women, but men and children. It's amazing what God has done through him. But Lee William knew that God chose him. He knew that. Now, he also knew that he was a human being, a mortal man. Every one of us in here have come short of the blessings of God. But what God, when he gives you an assignment, The results of that assignment when you carry it out is really unbelievable. The way you help people. I want to say for Lee, to all singers in this building, in this world, Lee Williams allowed God to come through him to the people. 
It's time out. Really. God want to bless the world. Right now, the world is at a standstill with this COVID. Man is trying everything he can to cure it. But until we fall to our knees and ask God to forgive us, we'll be stumbling and fumbling. Lee William was a perfect example to human beings, men, women, boys, girls. I received a call from a lady, a Caucasian, that says, I want to buy a record on Lee Williams. Said, he, my, my son, he wants this record. He heard it from an inmate. He was incarcerated. He was in prison. Said, but he heard this song by Lee Williams from an inmate. Can you sell me a copy so I can give it to him? I said, no ma'am, we can't sell you a copy, but we will give you a copy. One for you, one for your son, a CD and a DVD. The lady called back a few months later and said her son had rededicated his life to God. Singers, artists, ministers, Christians, God want us to come on and be real. He, he want us to really, really serve him. I remember when Glenn Stevenson first introduced me to Lee Williams, we was at a small church in Birmingham, Alabama. They called a the group up to sing, and everybody in the church got up. And I said, what are they standing up for? So I stepped out in the aisle to see what was going on. And they were standing because of the ministry that was coming through this group. I've seen a lot, but it's not every day that you see people, you don't have to say stand. You don't have to say clap your hands. Give them what God put in you. Amen. And they will honor him by standing and praising him with you. Yes. We got a lot of work to do. Amen. We got a lot of work to do. And singers, ministers, lay people, Lee William was a perfect example. Yes. Humble is the way. Yeah. Yes, sir. Humble is the way. Don't you stand up. Let God stand up in you. Yes, sir. Mrs. Williams, I retired about three, four years ago. But if you need me, if the family need me, I'll do what I can. Because what you gave to the world does not come every day. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Brother Linwood. All right, Deacon. No. Okay. All right, Deacon Watkins, Howard Watkins, give him a hand as he come. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
we are happy to be here. We want to say thank God and may God bless the Williams family. Uh, very, very brief, uh, brief, brief as I can. Uh, my wife over there with the white on, one day last week, she told me that she said, I'm not, I'm not cooking no fried food and I ain't cooking no meat. She said, I ain't cooking nothing but vegetables. I said, okay, yes, ma'am. So I got in my car and went to Chick-fil-A, hallelujah. I got in my car and uh, my truck and I went to Chick-fil-A and when I was waiting on my food, a young man walked up to me and said, he said, aren't you Harvard Walker? I said, yes, sir. He said, you, did you know Mr. Lee William? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, can I ask you a question? I said, yes, sir. He said, what do you think made him so unique? He said, my mama, my auntie, my sister, they just love him to death. I said, mine too. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, well, what do you think that really made him so unique? I said, well, it's what the spirit gave him to say. I, I said, now, he took an old song I learned to lean, and he just said, when you're sure enough, need your kinfolk. They'll turn. Then, then Melvin, Melvin had him in the studio, and he didn't even want to sing the song. Melvin had him singing Cooling Water. He didn't even want to sing it. I could see him standing over there now, sitting over there looking at Melvin with his eyes closed. But when they messed around, and gave him the mic. Lee, Lee started patting his feet both ways. And then Lee said, I'm reminded of another water. That's what made him, that's what made him so unique to me. What'd he say? And the young man asked me, he said, are you going to the funeral? I said, on the way I don't, they got to shut the highway down. And he said, well, are you gonna sing? I said, no, sir. I said, my whole voice ain't good like it used to be. He said, well, all the songs you got, he said, if you were gonna sing, what would you sing? I said, well, I was sang the song the last time I saw Lee, he couldn't see me. So I whispered his ear and told him who I was. I said, hey, Lee, this how He said, hey, how? And I said, if I was a singer at Lee's funeral, the song that I would sing was, it would be, I'll see all my friends. I see all my friends. Fine.
There won't be. Won't be no more crying. Tell somebody there won't be no more day in Hallelujah Square. Well, would you clap your hand for Brother Jarrell Small and Dr. Press Blackman as they come. And after them, Pastor Chris Taylor and I will be back. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is a, a hard task for me. Lee Williams was not just a singer, but he was a, an icon, even a lion. He was a giant. And I can remember... 1999 when my my brother Jason went in the Marine Corps I was close to my brother and I wasn't used to the fact that he was no longer in the house with me and somehow he got a, a hold of a cassette tape entitled Love Will Go All The Way and those songs got me through those days of missing my brother with my mom in the house and my sister Sierra we would we would sing songs in the mirror like Jesus is alive and well and love will go all the way. And it was those moments that started what I'm doing today, singing and traveling. It was because of this man, Dr. Lee Williams. Can we clap our hand for him? Come on, we can do better than that. Let's celebrate him. Hallelujah. Every major thing that I've done, I'm not going to be long. I've sung, I've had the opportunity to sing in, in front of a lot of people, even cross barriers like uh, presidential candidates and different things like that, and I've been afforded to do. And I've always did a Lee Williams cover. Singing songs like I Can't Give Up is the reason today I own my 2017 Ford Transit van that somebody wrote a check, gave me the keys and walked away and I've never seen them again. Because I sang I Can't Give Up at a funeral service. When I sang for the NAACP gala in front of President Joe Biden, it was because I sang I Can't Give Up. So many doors that has been opened for me it's because when the world would try to copy people like Michael Jackson, he's a legend, and all of these other ones, I would try to copy Mr. Lee Williams. Now, I never stood in, in one spot, and I don't look like him because I'm a big piece of leather all put together, but, <laughs> but I would try. I sure enough would try. But I'm getting ready to take my seat, but I would be remiss if I didn't sing just a piece of one of my favorite song, is that okay? There's a song that he used to sing. He said, I'm running for my life. Running cause I want to see crime. I've made up in my mind. I'm going to run. While I still got time, I'm gonna run. Got it, run, run. Got it, run, run. Ooh, got it, run. Well, while the blood. Give my hand 
as they come. Thank you so very kindly, and blessings to everyone that's here. I'm Dr. Perez Blackman, Perez Graham Radio, Los Angeles, California. And I am honored to be here, Williams family, because your husband, your father, your uncle, your whatever he was to you, blessed us in Los Angeles, California for 19 years. Los Angeles has normally been the place of movie stars and cars, but they changed it to movie stars, Lee Williams and cars. On the second Sunday in June every year, the Carson Community Center presented Lee Williams and the Spiritual QCs from Tupelo, Mississippi. Most of all of the artists you see here perform have been to Los Angeles for us. For my Prez Graham family team in Los Angeles and those of you that travel around the world, I want to say to you, thank you very kindly for supporting June the second Sunday. It will always remain a Lee Williams Day. No matter who we bring to Southern California, <laughs> Sam Green, Doc Relaford, Bo Miller, for all of you, Harvey, Melvin, everyone. Listen, Lee Williams was one of a kind. Lee opened so many doors because of Mr. James Bullard and Jerry Peters. When we met at Roscoe's House of Chicken and Waffles, they said, this is one guy you've got to hear. And at the same token, by a token, when I found out he could sing, I said, we're going to make him really happy. Ollie Collins, Jr., thank you, sir, for paving the way for us in Los Angeles and making Lee Williams an icon in Los Angeles. So as I prepare to leave to go back to Los Angeles, I want you to know, Mississippi, Los Angeles, Southern California, we appreciate Lee Williams and the spiritual QCs of Tupelo, Mississippi. From the world's greatest radio station, KALI, 900 AM in Pasadena, Bishop Lindsay, thank you so kindly. God bless you and family, just remember these words here. There is a word between Genesis and Revelation that is found in the 27th book of the New Testament. It says, God will wipe away this day, all tears will go away. But when your day get lonely and you feel like you need to lean on someone, in the 26th book of the New Testament, the book of Jude, now unto him. Good evening. the quartet industry, to the Williams family. I thank you for this moment. Sat, CC all of y'all. Y'all daddy meant a lot to me. When I was a little bitty boy, in the spring hit this, your mama can be a witness, I was little. And y'all daddy used to sing, and he would have an anniversary. And he would call on little boys and little kids to come up and he would say, Coca-Cola is the real thing. And Lee would, I'd be sitting there, I'd be laughing and liking, I'd be, I just like him and I love him. And he, he would call me to come get the coat. And I would come get it. He would say, take that coat right over there. And I would take it over there. I mean, I was so happy. And, every day, I, and I would follow him, man. Just, I used to just follow him. And, and so I got the opportunity, I know I got two, I got the opportunity to go with the group. And Scooby, you know I love him. You know that. Scooby used to laugh, I love him, man. And uh, he be, they, I'll never forget one time, they were going out of town, and I, I, I went with the group and all. So they, we wasn't going real far, we were going to the Mississippi Burn at, at uh, Chia's place. And so Lee was a late, little late getting there, and they said, well, Peanut said, uh, if you don't mind, will you drive Lee? on up there. I said, yeah, man, I drive, yeah, no problem. And uh, so Lee, I got him and got in his van. I drove him on up there. We stopped by the jail and sung at the jail. And I was scared. I said, Lee, I'm scared to go in that jail. Now, I don't like no jail, man. 
He said, well, why are you scared? I said, All right. my mom always told me don't go around no jail and stuff, man. He said, well, uh, you not in jail. You going to hear the QC. I said, I'm going into the jail. But this is what, what happened, though. That night, Lee sung, and um, that particular night, he sung, and uh, I was driving. So we got out, get ready to come back home, man. It was late, man. I, and I got in the van, and, and Lee got in there, had his baseball cap on. I said, you ready to go? Yes, sir. I bagged that van up, burgundy van. Boom! I hit this lady's car. I said, Lee, I done hit somebody's car. I said, lady wasn't behind us, man. I promise you she wasn't. And Lee got, and Lee, Lee looked at me and said, well, let's go get out and talk to her. I said, okay. And so we got, I got out. I said, ma'am, I'm sorry I hit your, hit your car. So I'm real, real sorry about that. I said, but then Lee come out around the corner. He said, hold up, ma'am. He said, this is, this is my van and I would take care. She said, is that Lee Williams? I said, that's him. She said, don't worry about my car. Don't worry about it. She said, don't worry about it. She said, she, she said, you will not have to pay for this. Son, get back in that car and take care of Lee. I said, I said, man, you somebody. And I'm, but this is it. And I'm going to go. I, and one night, we was in Atlanta, Georgia. I was with him in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm gone. I thank y'all for this moment. I love it. And Ruth, you know I love it. Lee, Lee helped build all kind of churches. And this, a lot of these pastors tell the truth. I'm the moderator. I can say it. Lee Williams, the QC, helped build churches, the Spring Hill District, and we're going to do something for Lee. Lee did that. But let me tell you this. We was in Atlanta, and um, I never will forget this. They had me call myself being Lee Bodyguard, and I loved every minute of it. And so Lee walked on stage. I walked with him, and I, I loved it, boy. And um, so that particular night, I ain't going to call I told Harvey, but I ain't going to tell the artist's name, Harvey. That artist that sung before Lee, he was really singing, and it was people all over, and I had never seen. I said, man, these people are really, man, Lee, they were shouting, and the artist was really getting down. And I was standing beside Lee. I said, I said Lee, I said, what you going to do, man? I said, I ain't never seen nothing like this, man. He looked at me, and I never will forget this. He looked at me, he said, can't nobody beat me being me. <laughs> and when he came off this, and, 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 and when he got on that stage, I was looking at him, I was just looking, I said, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And Al hit that music. <laughs> Jesus is coming. Them folk got to dancing like they're right there. So let me tell you something. Y'all daddy was a real legend. Don't you think he wasn't? He was a real legend. And CC, Sack, y'all take care of Miss Andrew. And I promise you, I'm not a liar. I do anything I can for y'all. I love Lee Williams and Spiritual QCs and the Williams family. God bless you. Amen. Well, put your hand together for Kadarius Price. I can't give up I can't give up now See, I've come I've come too Too far To turn Turn around 
clap them hands. Thank you, Brother Kadarius Price. How many can say that song touched my life? Hallelujah. At this moment, we'll have our acknowledgement by Patrice Frazier. Say amen as she comes. and our deepest sympathy. The acknowledgments. We deeply appreciate and gratefully acknowledge your kind expressions of sympathy, love, passion, acts of kindness, thoughts, and prayers. It will always be remembered by the family of Lee Andrew Williams. I have several, several resolutions. However, time would not permit for me to read them all. However, I will acknowledge all of those that did send something. Mount Carmel Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Anthony L. Craig of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, Reverend Charles Atkins, Second Baptist Missionary Baptist Church, Church of Gaines Street, Little Rock, Arkansas, Resolution of Respect, Dr. Press Blackman, Senior Radio Personality and Promoter, Press Grimm Production and Staff, Los Angeles, California, the Office of Most Reverend Archbishop and Apostle Dr. Gospel Promoter and Radio Announcement, CFC Gospel Radio of New York, Officers and Members of Temple of Good Shepherd Ministries Worldwide, Chief Apostle and Presiding Prelate, Dr. Elisa Crawley Bonaparte, Episcopal Headquarters, Brooklyn, New York. There's a plaque also from the state of Arkansas, Glory Reveal Mission Church of Macon, Mississippi, Pastor Armando Adams, Overseer Gloria Jones. Brother Bobby Jones was here. He would say something like this. Douglas, Melvin, Check. and Henry Green. Would y'all put your hands together Check. for Check. the Check. Williams brothers? Come on. Clap those hands as they come. Praise the Lord, everybody. What year was it? 1997. A few years before that, I was sitting on my, my couch in the living room with my acoustic guitar, and I started picking a little song that said, Cooling Water. And I didn't have no idea what I was doing, and I just, I just God put the words in my mouth and said, From my grandmama's well. 1997. Doug and I was in the studio doing the uh, Duets project. We had did songs from with Yolanda Adams on down. A lot of artists all over the world, all over the United States. And uh, at that time, as a matter of fact, Lee Williams and Mr. Bullard actually had turned down cooling water. And Doug said at the time, said, well, since they turned the song down, because they wanted another blessing, who we another blessing, he got a chance to do both of them, as a matter of fact. And after that, he said, bring Lee Williams down, why don't you bring him down to do duets with you as the cooler one as a duet. 
and the rest is history. The last I checked, when my boy, my buddy, my friend, Last I checked on YouTube, that song, because of him and God, the concept video had over 21 million views. <sighs> See, that went over somebody's head. I didn't say it just the people in two below. I said over 21 million views of cooling water, watch this man sing. And I want to pass the torch on. I want to ask his son to come up here. Cece, will y'all give him a hand? The Williams brothers would like to pass that torch on after we retire. I want to see the QCs and Cece singing this song. And I want y'all to just join in with you, with us, and just help just do a verse of this, if, if it's all right with y'all. Let me say one thing. So we're sinking. In a world of sin, grace and mercy, it took me in, took my feet out, my clay, and placed the moon on a rock to stay. Oh, what a relief it was when God rescued me. Ah, he loosed the chain that had me by. You will be all right. 
brothers. Hallelujah. Come on, give it up for Brother Lee Williams' son, CC. Come on. Mama, the legacy will continue. And what I like about CC is he's every image of what Mr. Williams did for us. And we're going to push him as much as we can. One more time, give him a hand. Let me do this for Pastor Pettis come. They want to acknowledge everybody that was on live stream. Danny Boy Entertainment, Theodis Simmons, WJTV, Channel 12 Jackson, and the sound stage event. Could you give all of them a hand? Before Pastor Pettis come, I want to say this. I don't think Mr. Lee would want to have it no other way but like this. And can I get the room to come unglued when I say he retired on top? But that wasn't his greatest accomplishment. His greatest is when he walked through the old gates and got a chance to see Jesus for himself. So one more time, clap your hand for Brother Lee Williams and his legacy. We're down to the part that all of us need to hear. Family, you can remain seated, but everybody else, what you stand as the man of God come to break the bread of life. And would you clap your hand and praise God for my friend and my brother, Pastor Darrell Pettis. Let every breathing believer say together, hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, say hallelujah again. Will you join me in giving God the biggest hand clap of praise you have available? Come on, I see some of you not doing nothing. Come on, put those hands together in honor of the Lord. I honor with such a great deal of my respect all of the wonderful ecclesiastical representation who share the platform with me today. Most certainly to our presiding elder, Pastor Armando Adams, to Pastor Dr. Ronnie Strong, Uncle Ronnie as I affectionately call him, and so many others who are here today, most certainly to this family. I'd like to begin by just saying what a mighty God, somebody, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. And it rings aloud, what a mighty, mighty God we serve. Pop Thorne, such an honor to be able to stand to mom, all my brothers and sisters, and to all of you who have extended unto me this humbling opportunity. Must I say to you that this means so much to me have this chance because people say that our generation that our generation doesn't know how to honor trailblazers people say that our generation doesn't know how to really appreciate those who went before us and accomplished what we're trying to do they say that we want their success but we don't want their struggles or their stories but today, this platform, this opportunity, gives me a chance to speak on behalf of our generation, to let you know that we have a great deal of respect for all of those who blaze the trail for us. And we would be nothing without the personality of a Mr. Lee Williams and so many other giants Clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Come on, clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you. All right, it's still Sunday, and I pray, I solicit your prayers that you will just uh, talk back with me while I preach this particular message. I want you to just, if you don't mind, look over at your neighbor and just fist bump them and say, hey, neighbor. Come on, I can't hear y'all. I know it's cold out there, but just have five fist bump your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor. 
when I look back over my life, there's a lot of testimonies I got. But there's just one that I got to tell you about tonight. And look at that neighbor and say, neighbor. And I want you to just sing these words to them. Tell them, I once was lost. But now I If you don't mind, will you just lift your hands with me? And because the will of the Lord has been done and healing has come and taken place, if you love him, say it! Yes! Yes! of preaching quickly is that noise speeds me up silence slows me down so if y'all if y'all talk back to me it'll take me about 18 minutes but if y'all don't say nothing to me it's gonna take me about an hour and 32 minutes touch your neighbor and say you better talk back to him you better talk back to him Matthew 25, 21. The word of the Lord says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Feel myself slowing down already. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou unto the joy of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I'd just like to talk for a few moments about two words, well done. Will you help me shout, well done. Brothers and sisters, beloved, I'd like to begin my preaching presentation this afternoon by just simply telling you, family and friends, that it is with great humility that I salute today what I feel like was a great man. A man I would like to label as what one of God's best. I'm honored to be able to stand to bid a hearty good night to one of a kind. In my eye and in my heart, Mr. Lee Williams was an exceptional gift, an incredible artist, the world's favorite singer, a well thought songwriter, and an unforgettable encounter. In my eyes, his voice was simply deep and distinctive until he decided he wanted to raise it up. And when he raised his voice, then his voice became strong and confident. I'd like to just tell you that I believe his style was original. 
His swag was undeniable and his personality was an experience within itself. Everybody who had a soul felt and fell in love with how Mr. Lee Williams was full of success, yet he was clothed in simplicity. Lee Williams, the only man I know that would stand in one place, reach in his pocket and pull out a white hanky and fold it up and then pet his face and then persuade the whole world to come on. Let's have a good time. I stand today as an appreciator of God's divine time and God's order. As a young preacher, um, I did and was afforded the opportunity to do all of Mr. Lee's and the QC's devotions at their live recordings in Memphis. But today, by God's divine authority and order, I am now older and a little bit wiser, and now I'm not here to do Mr. Lee's devotion, but I'm here to give his earthly benediction. I am here, brothers and sisters, to tell you that I am of the spiritual persuasion that the words, well done, is now Mr. Lee's portion. When I consider the star Lee Williams was to the world, the general he was to the quartet nation, and when I hear about the pillar that he was to his family, some people, uh-oh, I'm going slowing down again, some people will call him a celebrity. Other people would call him an icon. Some other people, Pop Harvey, would call him a superstar. Uncle Ronnie, others would call him the great, the greatest of all times. Other people would say he's the cream of the crop. Somebody would say he's the best to ever do it. Somebody would call him number one. But today, I'd like to refer to Mr. Lee Williams as a real legend. Ain't nobody talking to me now. I, 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 I believe, Shante, that after careful and diligent calculation of how long he lasted and out of consideration to who he was, I just like to call him a real uh, legend. Brothers and sisters, I need to tell you uh, with the help of the Holy Ghost uh, that a legend is an extremely famous and notorious person. Uh, a legend is someone who has mastered in a particular field. Uh, a legend is somebody that is not just famous but they are important uh, and who is known for doing something uh, extremely well. Uh, nobody did it like Lee Williams. I mean, people would often try to mimic him uh, and try to imitate him, but I'd like to tell you uh, that Lee Williams will never be duplicated. And brothers and sisters, I need to tell you uh, that legends are not just legends uh, and they are not greatly valued because uh, of the love that they had on earth, uh, but legends are remembered uh, by the lessons they leave behind. And I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, that our legend, Mr. Lee Williams, uh, was not only loved uh, while he was alive, uh, but he left behind some lessons. And I know, and I know, I know I'm talking to a room uh, full of people that have been spiritually spoiled, uh, and now the church is guilty of raising a whole lot of superstars uh, with huge egos and can't nobody tell them nothing. Uh, but there are some lessons uh, that we can learn uh, from a legend. Oh, ain't nobody helping me. Uh, let me call your attention uh, theologically to Matthew chapter 25, Uncle Ronnie. I've got about 12 more minutes. This parable uh, of the talents. Here, this master who is leaving his house to travel uh, and before leaving, he entrusted his property to his servants and expected them to handle business while he was gone. The word of God declares according uh, to their own abilities, each man, uh, uh, one servant received five talents, uh, the second had received two, uh, and the third man only received one. The property that was entrusted uh, to these servants was worth more than money. And upon returning home, uh, after a long absence, uh, the master asked his three servants uh, for an account 
account of what they did with the talents he entrusted them with. The first and the second servants explained that, that they put in the work and they were diligent and they did all they could and as a result they doubled the value of the property in which the master had put them in charge of. Oh, but then the third guy messed around and didn't do anything with heels and however he all he did was merely hide his talent burying it in the ground and he was punished by the master and the master called him wicked and lazy this parable of the talents uh, is among some one of the most uh, abused texts in the New Testament uh, because contrary to the popular belief uh, the parable does not just uh, justify a gospel of economic prosperity but instead it challenges believers uh, to do the work until the master comes back hear this text brothers and sisters is amazing because like many others here it is the return of the master was certain but the timing was unknown he gave them all that he had he gave them talents to watch after up and they were supposed to do the work and double the value and here it is now that he's sure to come back but the timing is unknown after a long absence he decides what each servant has done with the talent that he entrusted him with the master expected them to continue business brothers and sisters this sounds quite amazing to me because I need to tell you that in the year of 1946 that our God was generous enough to place some property and some talent and some gifts in the hands of a lot of people. In the year of 1946, the Lord was not stingy. He was plentiful in his giving. For in the year of 1946, mama, there are some important people that were born in 46. In 1946, the American actor Sylvester Stallone was born. The American director and producer Steven Spielberg, the 43rd president, was born in 1946. George W. Bush, 42nd president Bill Clinton, the 45th president Donald Trump, was born in 1946. Singer, songwriter, and actress Dolly Parton was born in 1946. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. The French wrestler and actor Andre the Great was born in 1946. American actor, old man Danny Glover was born in 1946. God wasn't stingy with the gifts. When he decided that he was going to give some gifts, in 1946, he gave a whole lot of them. Suzanne Summers was one of them. A famed singer and pastor, Reverend Bishop Al Green was one. But there was another legend that was born in 1946. And his name is Mr. Lee Williams. And although I've watched a lot of TV, I never met George Bush, never met Bill Clinton, never met Donald Trump, know nothing really about Danny Glover, but I'm here to tell you that I believe that the one, Lord have mercy, who showed us the most of what it looks like to be a legend was Lee Williams. Do y'all mind preaching with me for just a moment? Oh, oh, I, need, I, I need to tell you, brothers and sisters, and I pick back up here, every legend leaves behind some lessons. You don't come in the presence of a legend and they not leave behind, Melvin, some lessons. So I was on my patio the other day and I was just sitting there reading and meditating and I could hear Mr. Lee talking to me. I said... I, I, I said, Mr. Lee, out of all of these sellout crowds, out of all of these hit songs, hit records, people standing around walls to hear you and see you, what are the lessons that I can share with the people who love you who still got to do the work until the master comes? 
He said to me, he said, son, I need you to give them four things. And he said to me, he said, I need you to help them to understand that they will never hear the words well done unless they do some stuff well. Lord, I feel Jesus in here. I, 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 I heard him. I heard him. He said it. He said it clear to me. He said, son, I need you to go in there. And I need you to tell them in that Bank Corp South Arena down there in Tupelo. He said, I need you to go in there and tell them that they'll, they'll never hear well done until they learn how to master some things. There are some things in this life that you've got to be diligent about. And I said, Mr. Lee, what, 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 are, what are your lessons? What are your lessons? He said, tell them. He says, number one, this is what I did until the master came back with me. And this how I doubled the value. This how I did well with my gifts. And this how I did well with my talents. I said, what is it that we need to do well? He says, number one, you need to tell them they got to separate well. Then secondly, he told me to tell y'all you got to learn how to stand well. Then thirdly, he says, you got to learn how to serve well. And then the fourth one is not a popular one. Twelve of y'all will holler back at me. But Mr. Lee said you got to learn how to suffer well. Now, now, I know, I know, I, I, I know, I know, trust me, trust me, brothers and sisters, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I said the same thing. I said to Mr. Lee, I said, these lessons are quite familiar. He says, what are you saying? I said, well, Mr. Lee, your lessons add up with the life of Jesus. Jesus was the legend of all legends. He separated well. He stood well. He served well. And he suffered well. Now, for 12 of y'all that don't mind talking to me, Lee's lessons was Jesus' life. And now Lee's lessons and Jesus' life is now our homework. And if we are going to ever hear him say well done there's some stuff we gotta do well now I'm not here to offend the church or the superstars but I think I need to tell y'all somewhere down the line we missed the mark Mr. Lee said you gotta tell them son they gotta learn how to separate well what I remember Mr. Lee Williams he was never an in crowd guy whenever I saw him most of the time until the boys came along the side of him he would just strut by himself sometimes. He would sit alone, but that's not the separation that he wanted me to share with you about. He said, you got to learn how to separate well. In other words, I asked him, what was he talking about? He said that there ought to be a distinct difference between the saved, y'all ain't hearing me, and the unsaved. I wish I had a church in here. Every singer wants Mr. Lee's success but the singers don't want to separate y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying in here I need you to fist bump your neighbor and say hey neighbor you got to learn how to separate you know you know back in the church we used to say save and sanctify most of the time, Brother Glenn, what understand, uh, uh, help, help me here. And when I tell you this, Uncle Ronnie, that separation was often, Lord help me, equated to sanctification. But most people thought sanctification was noise. They thought that if you shouted hard, you were sanctified. You know, y'all ain't saying that. They thought if you had a loud church that beat a lot of tambourines, that you were sanctified. But sanctification was never the noise, it was the separation. Lord, ain't nobody helping me. It was the ability to be able to separate well. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the council of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Mr. Lee said to me, 
He said, son, you got to tell them to learn. They got to separate well. Ain't nothing in the crowd. Ain't nothing in the crowd. You got to learn how to separate yourself. If you're going to stand in front of people, you got to take your salvation serious. He said to me, he said, son, I wasn't perfect, but I learned how to separate well. I picked up my Bible and began to read 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 14 that said, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship does the righteous have with the unrighteous? And what communion have light with darkness? I want you to know, brothers and sisters, Lee's lesson said we got to separate well. Second thing Lee's lesson says we've got to do is stand well. We got to learn how to just stand for something. We've got to learn how to stand on something. We've got to learn how to stand with something. And Brother Lee's lesson share with us today, brothers and sisters, I'm just about done, but my gear is slowing all the way down because ain't nobody saying nothing but I'm trying to get out of here quickly. But you got to learn how to stand well. To stand for something is to have and to maintain an upright position. You got to understand that every now and then you can't let success make you a wandering star. You got to learn how to stand for something. I've never seen a day before in my life like I see right now and some of y'all will talk back to when I said, it just looked like, it just looked like the church has began to do whatever it wants to do. And nobody, man, y'all don't, nobody is standing for anything. We sit around, but, and let our people do whatever they want to do. Say whatever they want to say. We tell people it ain't where you go, it's how you act when you get there. But oh yes, it is where you go sometime. And Lee's lessons teaches us that we've got to learn how to stand for something. Will you fist bump your neighbor two more times and say, hey neighbor, I, I, I want a lot of things out of life, but but Sunday, I'm just not willing to get them any kind of way. Lee's lesson said we got to, y'all ain't helping me preach. We got to separate well. We got to stand well. Then the third thing he told me, you got to serve well. This word shout, this word, excuse me. Serve, shout, serve, serve, shout, serve, shout, serve, shout, uh oh, shout, serve. Do you see I'm confused? Serve, shout, shout, serve. And this is the confusion that has corrupted our churches. Because we feel like we can shout our way into anything. But it looked like ain't nobody willing no more to serve. Everybody thinks that they can just show up and do whatever they want to do. But your shouting is good. But if you ever want to be successful, and go up in the kingdom, you got to learn how to serve. And you got to serve well. I picked up my Bible again, brothers and sisters, and I looked at this, and I hear the Galatians 3 and 23 said, whatsoever ye do, do it wholeheartedly. As to the Lord and not unto man, and knowing that our Lord, ye shall receive the reward and inheritance for ye shall serve the Lord. Matthew 6 and 24 says these words, Brother Melvin William, no man can serve two masters. 
For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. Will you just look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I feel myself about to go up a little higher. Brothers and sisters, the last thing he said to me, I'm done. He says, son, you got to tell them that if they're going to, hear the words, well done. Then they're going to have to learn how to suffer well. I, I, I need to tell y'all that everybody, Lord have mercy, want good days. But don't nobody want bad days. Yeah, everybody wanna go up, but don't nobody ever wanna go down. But uh, I just need to tell y'all that uh, Lee's lesson said, we gotta learn how to suffer well. Lord, help me to close this. <laughs> and to suffer <laughs> simply means to be subject to something bad or, Lord, have mercy, unpleasant. And I just stopped by to tell y'all that Mr. Lee suffered well. I wish I had a help in here. <laughs> We watched him get on that van and get on those stages and sometime he was so frail but he was determined to suffer well because he knew if he suffered well then he would have a great reward. Need to tell y'all uh, that there was another man uh, that suffered well. Uh, Mr. Lee uh, was not the only man that suffered well. Uh, Jesus, uh, I wish y'all would help me here. Uh, Jesus, uh, learn uh, how to suffer well. Uh, they hung him high. Uh, they stretched him wide, but he never said a mumbling word. He just suffered, and he suffered well. Turn, I said, turn, turn, and for the last time, tap your neighbor on the shoulder and said, neighbor, you got to know that one day you gonna have to give an account for what you did with what the master gave you. Yes. Yeah. But I need to tell you that I believe in my heart that Mr. Lee did well with what God gave him. And if you don't mind, I want you to help me throw a big party and a celebration for a legend. Lord have mercy that separated well. Help me celebrate a legend. Oh, that stood well. Help me celebrate a, a legend uh, that served well. Help me celebrate a, a legend uh, that suffered well. And I can hear his master saying, Well, well, well done. Thy good and faithful servant. If you don't mind, those of you that are still sitting, just jump to your feet. Help me for a second.
just get out of your seat. Yeah. Yes, Lord. And I need you to help me praise the true and living God. While I tell you, some of y'all still looking like he's still sick. But healing has made its arrival. Healing have already come after he toy. Yes, after he said to them, good and faithful servant, you've been faithful over a few things. Come on up. I'll make you ruler over many. The last clause said, enter, enter into the joy of the Lord. Rest on, rest on, rest on. Legend, rest on. Good night, sir. We'll see you in the morning. We'll see you. Y'all ain't helping me in the morning. Legend, you told us that you wasn't gonna give up, and you didn't. You told us you wasn't gonna give up, and you didn't. You told us uh, you wasn't going to give up, uh, and you didn't. Uh, and because of your uh, separation, uh, because of your uh, serving, uh, and because of your suffering, uh, if you did it, uh, we believe we can too. Uh, everybody uh, that love God, uh, stretch your hand uh, and open up your mouth. Uh, and Lord, teach me how to do good with what you gave me. Teach me how to separate well. Lord, teach me how to love my enemies. Teach me how to help everybody. Yeah, yes. This is where the saints start praising God. Come on, just open your mouth and praise him. Come on, this is where the saints start praising. We are sorrowful in the coming in, but we rejoice in the going out. Y'all still sitting there like we ain't got nothing to be thankful for. Come on, open your mouth and praise God. Yes, Lord. 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 Sisters, I want you to hear me well. Hear me when I tell you this. Shh. Lee's lessons was also Jesus' life. The life of Jesus and the lessons that this legend left behind match and sequence so greatly if you never hear nothing else I say one day the master is going to return and he's going to want to know what did you do with what he gave you when he comes back He's going to ask for an account 
of what you did with what he gave me. And it is just my, it's just my spiritual persuasion that if we've ever had an example, we had it in this legend. So as you go back to your lives, singers, singers, as you return back to the stage, musicians, as you pick back up your instruments, CC, as you stand to sing, sir, remember that you will never hear well done until you learn how to do some things well. I believe that this is not the end of a thing, but it is the beginning of a thing. I believe in my heart that things are shifting. And God is raising up a nation as he expressed to Jeremiah that will obey. Separate well. Let there be a distinct difference between you and the unbeliever. Serve well. I know your road life is extensive, singers. But do yourself a favor. Find you a pastor. I know you're busy. But find you a church where you can grow. Because one day, one day life, it's going to bring you to face a battle that your song can't get you out of. You've got to learn how to serve well. God is just not trusting people with the field no more if they can't handle the house. Serve your families well. Serve your churches well. Serve your communities well. suffer well many are the affliction of the righteous God deliver us from them all there are going to be some days you don't feel like it but you got to go on anyway well done if everyone would stand with me Everyone, please. The only way I know to receive the will of God is by worshiping and praising our God. If you believe in your heart like I do, that this legend did well. If you believe in your heart like I do, that he has heard those words, well done, I want you to do me a favor. Put your hands together, open your mouth as loud as you can, and let's give God praise and glory for a well done legend. Come on, you can do better than that. You may never have got a chance to get close to him to tell him you were proud of him. But come on, clap those hands and open up that mouth. Let's honor the Lord. Mother, my brothers and sisters, when peace like a river 
attendeth my way. And when sorrow like sea billow roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Give the Lord a hand of praise, glory, and honor. Let's enjoy Brother Josh before we exit. Hallelujah. Solicit your prayers for this family. Today is not the end of it, but it is the beginning of a beginning of a journey that they will need all the love that they can get. We honor the Lord for the life, the love, and the legacy of Mr. Lee Williams. He will forever live in all of our hearts because he has been our legend. Directors.
Stop. 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 Stop.